It's a good question. Well, I mean, I grew up in the 1980s in, you know, the Reagan era uh, in New York, and it wasn't very fashionable to be an activist, a peace activist. So my father was very conservative, and my father and I would always fight about politics. Um, so I always look back at the 60s and the 50s, the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement with a kind of longing for this activism that I wished existed in, in America. So when I met Mayor Fishner and I learned that he had been a, such a big part of that movement, you know, I wanted to know more about, about him, about his motivation back then. And also back when I met him, it was still, George Bush was still president of the United States and he was kind of str struggling with, um, with life, both politically with the reality that the revolution that he had fought for just, you know, even though it, I think it was very successful in many ways, you know, it was not what he, he had hoped it would turn out to be, so. And then, you know, documentaries often don't go the direction you think they will. And uh, I began to see that he was really kind of uh, deeply troubled. I spent a lot of time in my career traveling and making, shooting films for other people in foreign countries. And now that I have a family and uh, children, the idea of staying in New York and working uh, is very, um, attractive. So I saw this as a, as a profile that I could make locally and I know from having worked on films and watched films that it's all about relationships and spending time and and I saw at first I saw this as kind of a Grey Gardens type film you know a Jewish Grey Gardens. I mean Mayer was like this New York brilliant but sad man. Um, and the process was, you know, is always about uh, doing the time and spending the time with or without the camera. I mean, it, it, it became something more and I kind of became trapped in a way in the, in the movie because I felt the movie was in some ways keeping him alive. Um, but it was also, it didn't, I didn't see an end to it. You know, if, uh, if I stopped, I, I was afraid that he would have nothing to live for. And um, I also feared that he might feel the pressure to end his life for, for the movie. So it, it was not a good situation. <laughs> well, you know, it was... Uh, I think, I think this is an interesting moment because, you know, people ask me how I'm doing and um, even though Mayer died two years ago, I've been with him <laughs> in the edit room and spent so much time with him that uh, it feels like it's now that the film is done that, that I am starting to deal with his, his death. Um, you know, it was, it was difficult, but it was also, um, I mean, my, my job allows me to be with these amazing people and be in their life. It, it was an honor, in a way, to witness his life and his death. Um, you know, I made it clear to him that I wished he, that he had other options, but um, I don't have any regrets about, about the film or about my friendship with him. Um, and in the end, there was a great sense of relief, in a way, that he was no longer in pain, that he got what he wanted. Um, so, uh, I, I, it wasn't a depressing process for me. There were some very hard moments, um, but, you know, he was a very uh, brilliant man and very funny, and uh, that stays with me. Oh, there's no question, you know. I mean, 
it, it's, it, there's a complicated mix of, of issues at work, but one of them is his, his great narcissism. I mean, he was mentally ill and he was, uh, you know, lived in the shadows of some great, some great people and he wanted to be recognized and he saw this as a way to, to be recognized. Um, but also I feel like there was an altruistic uh, reason. I mean, he, you know, he, there's a scene in the movie where he goes to his doctor and talks about donating his body organs. And in some ways I feel like he was donating his, his pain also to allow me to document this process um, in hopes that it would kind of start a conversation about about depression, about suicide, about the rights of people to control their life and death. Um, so I feel like uh, it's a mix of things. Um, but I, uh, you know, there was a time when he really wanted me to film him physically dying. Uh, and I, you know, refused because I felt like that would be too much of a encouragement. You know, I, I, I said to him, if he wants to film his death, he has to do it himself um, because I don't want to that on my conscience. In some ways, it certainly is. I mean, you know, Mayor lived his life through politics and also through through resistance, uh, and and if you told him he couldn't do something, it made him, you know, want to do it even more. So he did see it in some ways, and that was one aspect that allowed him to move forward. But I think that it would be uh, incorrect to say that that was the main issue. I mean, I think that that his his depression was the main driving force, his mental illness that did not allow him to, um, I mean there were many, uh, there are many other causes that he could contribute to in his resistance uh, that he would have, you know, the world would have benefited more if he had not made that decision, so. But yeah, I mean, you know, and also the fact that, that many, not many, but quite a few of his friends um, also chose to end their life. Uh, kind of gave him permission, I think, to do it. I mean, I have never made a first-person film, and, um, and it's not something I'm comfortable with, but the reality is that we're always interfering with, I mean, the, the process, you know, the film begins with a mention of the Heisenberg Principle, which is that you can't conduct an experiment without influencing it. And every movie, I, I, every time I pick up the camera, I'm interacting with my subject. Um, and this was just clearly too important and too challenging to stay behind the camera. I felt like if I was gonna move forward, I had to um, be a part of the story. And also, I felt that it, it became, and one of the most interesting parts of the, of the story was our relationship and that kind of struggle. Um, so it was not what I had wanted and you know early on uh, the first few scenes when I'm talking to him I'm not even I'm hardly focusing on him with the camera because I didn't expect that my voice would be in it. Um, but uh, it just it wouldn't make sense without it. Well, I mean, I don't know that that's true. Um, you know, we uh, experienced the Occupy movement um, in New York with Mayer, and I was hoping that that would in some way um, energize him and reinvigorate him, because I think he has a lot to, to he had a lot to teach them. Uh, but, you know, what happened was, in my, I'm not a historian, but, um, you know, the, 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 the Vietnam War kind of brought together uh, and ignited a certain opposition um, that was largely successful. And I feel like the, 
the social movements of the 60s brought about you know racial and s sexual and gender and environmental uh, movements uh, and then in the 70s those movements broke off into their own individual they call it kind of personal identity politics um, so the movements exist but there is no uniting force to bring them together um, I think, uh, and then in the United States, there are movements that are conservative movements um, that in some ways are more organized. I mean, the gun rights movement, you know, is certainly a social movement. Uh, it, I think it's insanity, but um, uh, it's tough. I mean, I think that, that the United States is built on this concept of individuality that in some ways works against uh, people coming together to, to, to make social change. You know, it's every man for himself. Um, and uh, that is uh, in some ways a wonderful thing, but it, it, it prevents, you know, large scale social change uh, in a way. You know, I just, we just had our first screening um, ever in the United States last week, and that was at the Woodstock Film Festival, which was like, you know, it was very much a home crowd because those people really understood and, and got Mayer's, where he was coming from, his history. Um, so I'm just excited to, to screen this for people who, who are looking at it from a different perspective um, and hopefully begin a dialogue about, about some of these issues. Um, my expectations are conversation and, you know, exchange. <laughs>